In this segment, we're going to talk about factuality of generations from large language models. So we think of large language models as modeling distributions over text. And a lot of times we're asking them questions and expecting to get facts out, but these are slightly different things. I think the easiest kind of thought experiment to think about to conceptualize this difference is that these models are trained on the web and there might be kind of widely popularized falsehoods that the models have been exposed to and can reproduce, but are not necessarily the kinds of things we want them to be saying, right? Another way of thinking about this is just that there's a lot of information out there, right? Like think about all of the cities and the people on Wikipedia and all of the cities have latitudes and longitudes and all of the people have birthdays and things like that. A language model may not be able to store all of that information. Uh, if you just look at the amount of data that's there and try to kind of compress it using standard compression algorithms, there's actually a bit too much even for the kind of largest models that we have today, even if we assume that they're kind of perfect encode, uh, perfect kind of compressors of information. So as a result, what'll happen is that sometimes the model assigns a kind of moderate probability to several options. It's sort of unsure of an answer and spreads out probability mass. Now, the reinforcement learning from human feedback process really improves this. So this is why when you ask ChatGPT or GPT-4 things, it'll say, oh, I, I don't know, a lot of the time rather than giving a wrong answer. But this is still not perfect. And we're going to talk here about how we can actually figure out when these models are kind of tell, you know, saying correct facts or not. And this is very much an emerging area. So I'm going to give you a kind of overall view of a w one way that we might do it with the sense that this is kind of rapidly evolving as the research here progresses. So the concrete thing we're going to think about is also referred to as grounding language model generations. It's a little bit different from uh, kind of perceptual grounding. But basically, suppose that we have some text generated by a language model. And suppose that we have a source document. How can we check that if what the model says is factual with respect to this source? So we're going to think about there being a few steps in this process. The first is figuring out what this source document is, which may involve something like information retrieval. The second is saying, all right, if we get some long response out of ChatGPT, how are we going to break that down and figure out all the little like, individual things that need to be checked? And then the third piece here is actually checking each of these. So we're going to assume for now, we're going to kind of skip step one. We'll come back to it a little bit at the end of this segment. Um, but we're going to assume that someone gives us this reference text or these documents. OK, so let's think about this second stage. We want to think about if given a long response, what are the pieces of that response that need to be checked? Well, one approach is to just say, let's break it into sentences and say, we need to check sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, et cetera. Now, you can actually go a little bit deeper than this, because a sentence might be long and complex and express several of what we call propositions. So this comes back to ideas that we talked about in syntax. And there is a long history in frame semantics of thinking about what is a proposition, uh, basically, what are the units of meaning in sentences that really reflect kind of something happening in the world. A lot of the time, you could think about this as being anchored to verbs. So let me give you an example. We're not going to use something like a frame semantic parser here. Instead, we're going to use large language models to extract propositions. So we have a sentence here, the main altar houses a 17th century fresco. Even going just up to that point in the sentence, we already have a kind of unit of meaning that can be checked, this red underlined thing. Then uh, the, a 17th century fresco of figures interacting with the framed 13th century icon of the Madonna. So we know now what the fresco is of, and that's a kind of separate proposition from where it's housed, right? So we can kind of break things up here. And then icon of the Madonna painted by Mario Balassi. So there's this kind of sense that we can break this text up into these pieces. There are other pieces that we could use as well, things that this sentence presupposes. For example, when you talk about something like the main altar, we are presupposing that an altar exists, 
Now, we're not gonna write that down in our decomposition, but I think what that does show is that there are many different ways to do this. So what I'm showing is not the authoritative right way to do it, it's just one way of kind of roughly breaking this down. And a lot of the current systems for doing this are using large language models in order to do it. All right, so now that we've got all these units of meaning, how do we check that they're correct? Well, one idea is to come back to textual entailment, which we've talked about a bit throughout the course, to actually see if each piece is entailed by the source. So one way to do this is to just say, all right, if you've got a whole bunch of sentences in a document and a sentence level entailment system, we're going to look at our sentence and then everything in this document and take a max over those entailment scores. So concretely, if we're trying to check this first piece here in the generated text, there are strange shape patterns on Arcadi Arcadia Planitia, then what we need to do is we need to look at its entailment score with every sentence in this document here. And we're basically saying, hey, does one of these sentences support this generated thing? So we compute those sentence level entailment probabilities and then take a max over that. We can also use document level entailment systems, which we haven't really talked about and involve uh, kind of training on separate data sets, um, but we can kind of dispense with that sentence level classification and maxing and just run a document level system. This kind of makes sense, right? Because textual entailment is about saying, does this sentence kind of follow from the input? And we're looping over sentences and trying to establish that. Now, it might be the case that you need multiple sentences to support what got generated, right? And in that case, this kind of approach would fail and you really need the document level thing. So there have been some recent systems, uh, including this one called FactScore, that, try, that implement these sorts of ideas. So this one breaks things down into these propositions, sort of like I was talking about, uh, and then tries to validate each of those against Wikipedia. Uh, it uses large language models for all of these pieces, so it doesn't use textual entailment here, uh, but it's kind of achieving the same goals as some of these earlier systems we're going after. Finally, I can show you a pipeline, uh, this RARR system from Google that tries to kind of accomplish everything. So it starts with a uh, input passage down here, Millie in between premiered on 24 February 2014 on C, uh, CBBC. And it generates, in this case, rather than statements or propositions, it generates questions. And these questions here are passed into a retrieval system, they used Google, uh, to retrieve a bunch of documents. And then the system checks the facts against those documents, in this case, using language models, and then eventually produces a revised version of the, uh, of the input. So their idea is to go all the way from checking to then finally revising and improving the factuality of the output. So this shows the kind of overall pipeline that you can use. Now, the challenges with this, we're not gonna get into evaluation, are that you can sometimes take things that were actually correct that the language model generated, but you're not able to find evidence to support them. So you say, oh, I don't know about this, or I think this might be false, but it was actually correct, right? So you can have sort of false positives and false negatives when you're trying to detect these errors. And I don't think there's a system here yet that's perfect or that really like takes ChatGPT and eliminates all the errors in what it generates. This is very much an ongoing active area of research, but it's something that seems to be uh, viewed as important by the research community because trying to figure out how to identify, check, and uh, you know confirm all of the pieces of information here seems to be important. That's the end of this segment.